Whose birthday is it tomorrow? Your birthday. <laughs> when you head to Geysir from Reykjavik, you are technically on the Golden Circle, so it makes sense to stop at Thingvellir. Thingvellir is where we used to drown witches, which we later found out were just normal women being super annoying. I will do a deep dive into Thingvellir and the Golden Circle in another video. Hotel Geysir is a fancy hotel. You can tell it's fancy because it's hard to find the entrance. Of course we took the wrong turn, so here's a quick tip. When you see the restaurant, carry on a little bit further up the road, and then you will see the main parking lot. That's route. a door. I made the booking under the name Lord Carl, which confused the staff somewhat. They had a hard time finding my booking, perhaps because I was dressed like I normally do. A hobo. It's a four-star hotel, but I don't really know what those stars mean. I guess they tell me how much of an effort I should make to look nice. They have definitely put a lot of thought and effort into the lighting at this hotel. The hallways are very impressive. Let's do a fancy hotel room walkthrough. We had what they call a deluxe room, which includes a bathtub and my finger. It's quite puzzling to me that there is no hot tub at the hotel. Not like there is no hot water around, so a bathtub is a plus, I guess. Be careful, the floors are extremely slippery when wet. And another feature of the deluxe rooms is the French balcony with a gorgeous view. I do think they put us in one of the rooms that almost sees the geyser because uh, I was being a bit annoying when we were checking in. They charged my credit card without my consent. Said there was a cancellation policy, but the thing is I hadn't cancelled. Actual glasses, actual cups from clay, an actual coffee machine. Not that crap that comes in these packages. That's how you know our hotel is fancy. Mm -hmm. Real coffee. Oh yeah, it's the TV works. So if we get bored, we can watch BBC News. Yes, feel like we're overseas. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, it's a French balcony, but you can actually be your you know, step on here. I don't think we can see the geysers. Oh, it's not a fridge. No, not a fridge. Because we're having warm beer tonight. Overall, we are quite happy with the room, but there are a couple of issues. It's like a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> this is way, way, way too soft. This is gonna hurt our back really bad, I think. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to sleep on this wooden floor. I'd rather do that, actually. Okay, here's, here's my beef. Follow me. <laughs> awesome view. Awesome hotel. Why is it designed so pretty much half of it is in the way of the actual geyser. Okay, there's maybe six or seven rooms over there that can actually see it. Why is it not the other way around? Because haven't you seen this beautiful parking lot and gift shop? Oh yeah. It's a lovely area. You kind of look at the bright side, I guess. Have to look at the bright side. Yeah, and we can see nothing really. There's some trees. There's some leaves. You can see some steam and the statue of those steam. ridiculous men with the wedgie. Yeah. This displays perfectly how to not give a wedgie. <laughs> uh, no, but I see your point. We could right? have a lovely view over the geyser area. The geyser so goes like over there. I know. We see a bit of fluff every now and then. And this is the expensive room. Not the most expensive. No, no, but know. an expensive room. Yeah, I'm not made of money. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Let's see how this YouTube thing pans out. Okay, here's another problem I have. Why is the balcony a French balcony? It wouldn't have made a lot of difference. Just making it twice as big, then it would be a real balcony, right? Yes. Now it's just basically a fancy cooler. With it being 11 degrees out, it was a crap cooler as well. But with that said, it was time to go out and enjoy that beautiful scenery we can't see from the room. Here's something that nobody ever tells you about going to Cases. What? It always erupts just as you're going to see it. This so you're gonna have to wait like 20 minutes. Not a lot of rules, no smoking and no drinks. The walk to the Geyser is only about a five minute walk and it's a walk that is out of this world. There is a friendly reminder at the entrance that the nearest hospital is about 40 miles away, so stay on the path. You would be forgiven to think that this little guy was called Geyser, but no, this is a Geyser called Strokkur. We waited surprisingly short amount of time for this. Yeah, look, like maybe because the weather's nice. So the shittier the weather is, the longer the way ahead. Hey? It might be actually true. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Not even remotely true. Well, this is the erupting geyser, it's called Strokkur. This is in fact the real geyser. It just hasn't erupted in tens of years. I have a vague memory of standing over there while it was erupting. Way before it became like a tourist attraction yeah, yeah. on such a scale as it is today. Then you could basically just go and throw a coin in there. <laughs> I used to set it up using soap, which may have kind of ruined it. 
They never goes off anymore. Could happen though. I did some actual research and discovered that the geyser did erupt a couple of times in 2016 and the geyser stopped erupting more due to a man-made channel in 1935. It was cleared in 1981 and the eruption started becoming more frequent and sometimes they were artificially stimulated using soap. Yeah. Who do you think had the idea of sticking soap? I think someone dropped the soap. <laughs> the use of soap was more of an environmental concern. At least the place is spotless. So we are at the top. Well, you know, that's the top up. We're not going there. It's going off. Did it just go off? But Strokker is still very much alive and it reaches about 15 to 20 meters or 49 to 65 feet. The wait between eruptions is anywhere from 3 minutes to 16 minutes and the fact of the matter is, the frequency and successions of eruptions are poorly understood. It is possible to predict when the next eruption will happen from the type of eruption before it, which means you can only ever predict one eruption at a time. Puny. Yeah, got performance anxiety. Too many cameras. Visiting Geyser is an exercise in patience. You might get lucky or you might have to wait for a decent eruption. It will happen, so make sure you don't take your eyes off it. The water will often show signs of agitation just before an eruption happens. That was a great idea. Great idea. Thanks, man. <laughs> and here's a quick tip. If an eruption happens, another might follow. Up to five more. Although two is more usual. If my face didn't get wet. This would be a great time to remind you to wear the right clothing for the occasion. It can get really cold and really windy here. It goes to show, don't take your eye off it for a second. At least the water's warm, hey? Huh? Oh yeah. Well, it was warm until it started cooling down. <laughs> and getting cold. Let's go get beer. <laughs> But first, a quick stop in the gift shop, which was actually nicer than I expected. There was a big sale on, which is probably an off-season type of an event. All kinds of crap for 40% off, and 40% off a lot is a lot, leaving you with a product that only costs you a lot. I think if you want something that's actually worth it in here, yeah. get this. How about this one? I'm gonna have to blur that out. Uh. There are some surprisingly affordable Icelandic wool sweaters there, and whatever the hell this is. Definitely, if you buy something of wool, you can keep it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think this really portrays just how ridiculous this spot is. There is a beautifully designed garden around the back that serves no purpose other than being a placeholder for a non existing pool. Yeah, it's a pretty useless place. The bar area is a really cool place and the lighting is absolutely gorgeous until you attempt to take a selfie. We had to book the table well in advance. I sent an email the night before and I received an answer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon the next day, about the same time as we arrived at the hotel. I requested an 8 o'clock, which was fully booked and a good job it was. I'll get back to that. We had a three course meal, the lobster soup, which was fantastic except for that one piece of lobster shell. Lamb chops, which looked nicer than they actually tasted and were quite tough to cut with the only knife provided. Only suitable for spreading warm butter on bread. And a tiramisu, it tasted just like a tiramisu. Overall, this kitchen, while nice to look at, seems to be mass producing okay food. As the evening wore on, I started to be quite relieved that we got the earlier table because the place was getting very noisy. It would be easy for me to blame this on the English, like everyone else does, but they were singing Icelandic folk music. At least the action drowned out the absolutely horrendous playlist playing on loop all the time. The next morning all was forgiven when we woke up to this view. We went for our standard hotel boiled bacon and overcooked eggs in the morning. But the morning buffet was actually outstanding and they had rye bread made on location. They did have boiled bacon of course and now we could actually enjoy the view of the gravel outside. 